Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Here for another day for some more best of one standard with the mono white tokens deck that I've been running up uh, through ladder. Currently at uh, platinum four and yeah, just been having a lot of fun with it here. Um, before I get into the minor changes here to the deck, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For all my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. I really do appreciate it. Also, I do want to give a huge shout out to my members. Thank you guys so much again for supporting me in a very real way and my channel. Um, if you would like to become a member and gain early access to my videos for as little as $1.99 a month to help support me in the channel, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's jump in here to the kind of minor changes since the previous video. So I really like how the deck has been going. Um, it's been in the higher, I guess in the upper 60% win rate. Most recently at 68% win rate overall. So very happy with it so far. But I have noticed that against some of the other aggressive decks, it can feel like it's a little bit slow, especially if you're on the draw. Um, it performs much, much better on the play, unsurprisingly, considering it's an aggro deck. I think it has, um, at least most recently, 80% win rate on the play and 62% win rate on the draw. So just trying to speed the deck up a little bit, I decided to shave one copy of Virtue of Loyalty. Um, it's a very powerful effect, but I don't know that we need four, and with three copies, you can reasonably see one a game kind of by the late game, which is sort of when it can help you sort of take over some of the other mid-range decks. And then I also cut one of the lands. We were at 23 sources, which did feel a little bit bloated. Um, 22 is probably where I want to stay just because I do want to be able to reliably hit like Sanguine Evangelist or hop to it on turn three on time, so that is pretty important. But I shaved a land, I cut one copy of Fountain Port down to three copies. Part of the reason for this is because I did add some more one drops and being able to um, like double play on turn two with like two one drops, we do wanna have a lot of white mana to do that. And so cutting one Fountain Port felt right. Um, I also cut one copy of Regal Bunicorn, which had been a one of uh, until recently. And it is a very powerful card. It's great for this type of deck. It's sort of one of the payoff cards. The problem is, is that, um, you know, it's not creating multiple tokens and it's not helping Knight Errant be even more ridiculous. Um, so I decided, you know, again, because I wanted to shift the, the mana curve a little bit down um, to cut that as well. I'm just sort of trying it out. So, now I added three copies of Recruitment Officer, which is kind of a, you know, a previous mainstay in the Mono White Humans deck. This is, isn't a Humans deck, since it doesn't, you know, just have humans in it, but it's still a very powerful card, very aggressive as a 2-1. It can help you kind of take over the late game by finding more and more gas with uh, four mana. So we're gonna add that in. We now have 15 one drops. So I think that the chances of being able to go like turn one guy, turn two, you know, play two one drops, or maybe like a reinforcements or a virtue of loyalty should be a little bit higher. And overall, I'm really happy with it. We do only have four pieces of removal in case of the Gateway Express. So it is very much just vomit your cards on the table and hope it gets there. But I mean, that's kind of my style of deck anyways, and I love it. So. All that said, let's go ahead and jump in. I 
I think one of the big kind of tough matches right now is trying to navigate the mono red matchup, which does have a lot of just crazy pump with um, some of the new cards and not having access to the life gain that we used to have before rotation definitely hurts, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, happy to keep. Great hand. We've got everything, all the mana we're going to need. Nice little turn one Warren Guard into turn two reinforcements. Bash in for three should be pretty good. Want to make sure you play this main phase so that when you have the trigger, when you attack, you have the tokens in play. I definitely learned that the hard way when I was first kind of trying the deck. Now whichever one they take, we just will do the other one. So they'll probably take Evangelist here, then we play Hop to it. Uh, this is actually also a great play. We can go Case into Officer, which feels pretty good. And I definitely like that. Now, depending on, like, I suppose there's a, there's a possibility that we could have held back Officer in case they have, like, um, temporary lockdown, which would certainly blow us out. So that is possible. But I think, you know, it's a calculated risk. And, like, if they haven't got it, we're pushing so much damage here that it's just ridiculous. There's a possibility that they might have removal here for our Soldier Token. So I think we want to play one of our three drops pre-combat just to make sure there's at least another token around to help get the pump. So I think I'm probably gonna play Evangelist here. This way, if they have like a board wipe next turn, you know, we might be left with like a bat left over. But if I didn't have Warren Guard here, I'd probably wait until post-combat to play the Evangelist. Okay, now we can full send, trigger case, and push for a lot. Okay, they're gonna gain some life. Also, Evangelist is pretty nice because if they like draw into lockdown, we, like, we've still got stuff to do. Yeah, Preacher is not gonna get it done. That'll work. I don't know. But yeah, I really like the kind of sequence of plays that you can make just very aggressive. Um, with all the one drops we've got, I think depending on like what you've got, like the priority of what you wanna play is the Warren Guard first. Um, probably next the, um, probably the Warden of the Inner Sky, unless they have, like, black or red mana available, and then maybe Inspector. Because you want to be thinking about, like, what you can draw into. Here, I guess we'll just run out the officer. We've got an extra copy, so I'm not as worried about it. There is a possibility that they can like brick wall this and where we would have been able to attack with our inspector. And I guess we could have if we'd played the inspector there. But if we trade Heartfire here for officer, that's fine too. The other possibility, like since they've got burn, 
They could try to keep us off Knight Errant. So I think maybe we just sit and then just play Officer plus Inspector here. That way, if they get rid of one of our creatures, we'll still have enough. Yeah, I think given that, we probably just sit. Here, we'll just take it. We want to make sure we can resolve Knight Errant. Okay, and that was a nice pickup. We can now go Warren Guard into Virtue into Knight Errant, which feels great. And now that we've kind of vomited most of our cards on the table, we're definitely up for blocking. But yeah, especially early, I don't think you want to make trades just to try to get to Knight Errant so you can resolve it and then get the value. Another nice pickup. So I think we just full send here. Um, even if we trade like both of our officers for here, their heroes, like we're totally okay with that. Then we'll play Evangelist post combat. I guess we didn't have to attack with Inspector. I mean, Inspector just gets blocked here by Emberheart Challenger. So that, I suppose, yeah. But I guess we snuck in some damage, so that's fine. Yeah, and that'll do it. 2 and 0. Opening hand looks great. We've got a nice turn one guy into turn two double play into case, which feels really good. And even a third land to go with it. Okay, so yeah, in this scenario, we want to play... I guess since we're going to warden here, it doesn't really matter. I suppose like if we draw into... Like if we were to draw into an inspector... Then it would make sense to play Warren Guard first to be able to attack for three. So I think there's a good chance we won't be able to attack for anything, but I think we play the Warren Guard given that if we draw Inspector, we can then use Inspector plus Warden to buff it up and still attack for three. So I think that's the play. A little bit of a corner case, but like we do have four in the deck. 
and there's a decent chance we potentially draw one. Now we want to play the officer first, just to see if we can smoke out the counter if they've got one. And then we'll go for the warden. We want to play this one last so that we'll be able to use its effect before they can kill it in response. We'll still have uh, we'll have active priority. So if we played like the warden first there and then the recruiter recruitment officer third, then they could interrupt that chain. Uh, yeah, that'll work. That'll go with our case pretty well here. The only problem with this is that since we're up against blue white, there's a chance that it's just like blue white control and it has like lockdown would suck really hard. But I think we just try to go for it. Okay, well, that was a nice. That makes me think they haven't got it or they haven't got three untapped mana either way. And I don't know if it's worth just playing out case here. Um, I guess probably not. I suppose there's like getting it down could be nice since they're probably not gonna have a lot of creatures, but maybe we save it. I don't know if we hold this or just play it out. Either way, we'll attack in here with both of these first. I guess like it's possible that they still have lockdown, so maybe we shouldn't, but at the same time, like it frees up our mana really well, which I like. I think we go for it. Just try to set up. Only because they, they don't have a lot of targets for it, and then just having it in play is pretty nice. I kind of want to go er Knight Errant here, but the problem is if we do... Like, they could have their board wipe on 5, and we'd miss some damage. And I feel like this is definitely, like... Like, missing damage here sucks a lot. I mean, I suppose they could also go... Hmm. Decent chance they have counters also. All right, given that, I think maybe what we do is we try to buff up pre-combat. So I think maybe we put like one on the um, one on the warring guard. We want to save one because we need it to buff the Warren Guard, but I think we can crack one of these. I think just getting the damage in, flipping the cases, yeah, because there's, there's the Sunfall that we kind of knew they had. But if we had, like, tapped out for Knight Errant beforehand, then we wouldn't, we would have lost the Knight Errant and we wouldn't have been able to push seven points, which I think is pretty important. So I think we played it right. Now we can go hop to it into Knight Errant, which feels really good. We have our cases flipped. Okay, we can refill. Yeah, this feels really good. And I think we want Warden probably plus Novice. I suppose we could maybe pick up reinforcements in case they have like another board wipe and just like get them 
and like end of turn. Yeah, maybe Warden plus Reinforcements. I could try to use the map token. I don't think it really matters because they're just going to block whichever one, potentially. I suppose we can spread it out, put it on like a 3-1. It's probably fine. Nice pickup. It's our, one of our really good cards against this matchup. So there's a question if we should play this now just because the play around counters, but I don't think so. Because like they have to board wipe again. So now we can just use Warden here. Um, we could just give it like straight two counters, but I think we'd rather just go ahead and just tap it down. And then hold reinforcements in case they have like another board wipe. And that way we have a decent chance to just like kill them with the two reinforcements plus the two tokens next turn if they board wipe again. Probably forces a counter here. I just dead on board. Yep, nice. Three and zero. Oh. Yeah, I really love where this deck is going. Um, thanks, guys, for watching. Let's take a quick look at the stats. All right, win rate is up to 71%. So 24 wins and 10 losses, 83% win rate on the play and 64% on the draw. So really like where the mono red matchup is going. 75% win rate, currently six wins, two losses. Um, we're also looking pretty good against um, green, black, four and two. And then couple two O's and three O's and then looks like I think this matchup here maybe we just this might have been a loss to a domain um, the other tough matchup so far has been the Rakdos lizard deck is kind of 50 50 with right now and then the 
other token stack, the Boros token stack. I, I don't know if this is Boros tokens or if this is just Boros Convoke that these losses are from, but I know that those are, I guess, yeah, so I'm not sure how much of it is from Boros tokens and how much is from Boros Convoke, but those are some of the other losses. But overall, really happy with the deck, and we will see you in the next one. You guys are awesome. Mm -hmm.